Welcome to our service of worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. And we're glad that you're joining us here again at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Dublin, Ohio. I'm Pastor John Morris, and I'm glad to be bringing you our worship today along with our fine musicians. This is also Mother's Day in the church, and it's a special Mother's Day here at Prince of Peace because actually in this last week, we have had not one, not two, but three births in the parish. So I want to welcome those who are new parents and those who give motherly love. Uh, Allison and Logan McKenna uh, are pleased to announce the birth of Liam John. And of course, the proud grandmother is Nancy Neal. Born to another Neal family, not the same spelling, but to Tom and Linda Neal, is a grandson, Adam Thomas Antonio. And then finally, some of you may remember about 10 years ago, one of our interns, Vicar Leslie Scanlon, who is now Pastor Leslie Weber. She and her husband, Jacob, uh, gave birth this last week to Caleb James. So in this season of new life and on this Mother's Day, this fifth Sunday of Easter, we are thankful uh, for the new life given to us in these three births. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of God standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow until salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they are destined to do. But you were chosen a race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the New Testament, the Apostle Stephen is the first one to be martyred for spreading the good news about Jesus Christ. And as such, Stephen is often referred to as the proto-martyr, the first martyr. Now, the actual charge against Stephen was blasphemy. That's a religious offense. That's why he was called before the high priest in Jerusalem. And that's also why, according to Old Testament law, he was to be stoned to death. Stoning with rocks was the punishment for blasphemy. That is to say false things about God. And in the ancient Near East, especially in Jerusalem, stoning was also convenient. Because if you've been to Jerusalem, you know there are a lot of rocks lying around in the city, so there is plenty of ammunition. There is an old legend that when God created the world, God sent 12 angels out to the earth. They were carrying these huge bags of stone that was to be distributed 
all across the planet. The angels left from the center of the earth, from Jerusalem, to scatter the boulders of stone over the world. But the problem, according to the tradition, was that the bags were so heavy that 11 of them broke over Jerusalem. And now most of the rocks are there today. And if you've been there with all the rocks around, you know it might even be true. But back to Stephen. The name Stephen is from the Greek word Stephanos, which means crown, like a king's crown. And Stephen is hauled before the high priest in Jerusalem because he's been doing things like talking about God's love in Jesus Christ and how God raised him from the dead in order to save us, and we certainly can't have that. But Stephen won't be quiet about the Jesus he has come to know. In fact, when he appears before the high priest in Jerusalem, he launches into a sermon that covers about 50 verses in the book of Acts. But apparently his preaching didn't win over the high priest or to many other parts either, because just as he says amen to the sermon, they drag him outside the city to stone him. The traditional place of his martyrdom is just outside the Lion's Gate in the old city of Jerusalem. It's also sometimes referred to as the Sheep Gate, because the lions that are carved on the entrance look actually more like sheep than lions. But it's outside this gate at the bottom of the hill, just across from the Garden of Gethsemane, where a little church has been erected to remember the exact location of St. Stephen's martyrdom. It's a Greek Orthodox church, with all the fanfare that that implies, the accompanying chandeliers, the incense, the painted icons on every piece of wall. I often stop at St. Stephen's Church on my visit to the Holy City, and every time, every time I've been there, the same priest is watching over the sanctuary. And if you make a donation, he then will allow you to go into the grotto, which is supposed to be the exact location of Stephen's martyrdom. You go down these stairs next to the church and enter the grotto or cave, and there there's a mural with all kinds of people lined up to toss their boulders on the head of poor Stephen. You can light a candle there if you would like. But I always like to go there because no one else is there, and it's sort of a secret place that I can take friends and other tourists when I go to Jerusalem. There are several things in the story of Stephen's martyrdom that I find at least curious or interesting in the New Testament account. First of all, it's the word itself in the New Testament used for the word martyr. It's the word witness. At the end of the Gospel of Luke, which is volume one of Luke's Gospel, we have Luke and then Acts is the second volume in the New Testament. There at the end of the first volume, Luke chapter 24, 48, Jesus looks at his disciples and says to them, you will be witnesses to these things. That is literally, you will be martyrs of these things, which of course most of the disciples will eventually become. They will in fact witness to Christ and give up their lives as they preach the good news about his love. Stephen, of course, is the first one to be sacrificed as a result of his commitment to Jesus. And did you notice how closely the martyrdom of Stephen is sort of a repeat of the crucifixion of Jesus. Luke records that while Stephen's dying, he says, Receive my spirit. And then he cries out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Sound familiar? From the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He also cried out with a loud voice when he died, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. They are almost mere images of each other, these two deaths. As if with seeing Stephen stoned to death, we see our Lord dying all over again. But why do you suppose we have this story of Stephen's martyrdom in the Easter season? Why has the church assigned this lesson to the fifth Sunday of Easter in the year A of the lectionary. St. Stephen's Day is traditionally December 26th, the second day of Christmas, 
Couldn't we just leave Stephen back there where he gets sort of lost with all the stuff surrounding Christmas? I mean, why do we drag him and his death into the Easter season of all places? Well, I think for the church, it has to do with what Stephen sees before he is martyred. I began this sermon with these words from our first lesson. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven, saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. You see, I think that is essentially the faith of Easter people. Filled with God's Spirit, we look up and we're able to see Jesus. Whether being stoned to death, or quarantined by a virus, or lying in a hospital bed, or just lonely and depressed, we can look up and see Jesus. Standing at the right hand of God, Luke says, that is ruling there for our sake. Filled by the Holy Spirit, like the disciples at Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts, with our Easter eyes we are able to see the risen Christ, alive and there for us no matter what, and clearly in control. Of this world. You see, here's the thing, and this is the profound message of the New Testament church. Our future is in the hands of Jesus. I know, I know a lot of people are depressed these days, and believe me, some days so am I. Do you think that social distancing is a good idea for extroverts like me? Do you think being limited to the people that I can talk to, where I can go, and what I can do is some benefit to those of us like me who like to be surrounded by as many people as possible? Oh sure, you introverts are having a field day. What could be better than you keeping everyone six feet away? That's like paradise for you. And then there's the whole Zoom thing. That's an introvert bonanza. You can come in and out of the screen area you want, you can log on, you can log off, you can mute. To me, that's just another form of hell. I get to be with everybody, sort of, but not really. But my future, our future, is still with Jesus. Introvert, extrovert, type A, type B, right-handed, left-handed, Democrat, Republican. When we look up, if we can just look up, we can see Jesus at the right hand of God. I know we're worried about where this virus is leading and who it may take from us, but Jesus is at the right hand of God. I know we're worried about the upcoming election and who will lead our country in the future, but Jesus is at the right hand of God. I know we're worried about death and destruction and the collapse of our society and where we'll get money to pay next month's bills, but Jesus is at the right hand of God. Do you see him? Some of you know that I have a saying that I sometimes use when I get too upset about something. And I'm not talking about honest pain and tragedy because there's plenty of that to go around today. But sometimes we all need some perspective. So I use this saying when we are disappointed or inconvenienced, when things happen like the water heater breaks or the copier gets jammed, or the car needs new tires, or the roof is leaking, or when nobody likes my post on Facebook, or when the mail didn't arrive yet, you know, really important things. At times like those, I like to say, do you suppose Christ is still in heaven in spite of all that? Do you suppose he's still up there? I mean, I know he may be teetering and ready to fall, but do you think he's still there? And of course, the truth is, he is still there for the mundane and the trivial, but also when everything is on the line, he is there. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. In other words, Stephen had an Easter moment because he saw exactly where Jesus is and where Jesus always is, in heaven, watching out for us, 
in making sure that our lives are safe with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we continue the Easter season celebration, let us remember the hope that you gave to our world. We pray for those in need, and we ask for God's blessing and sustenance. God of life and love, hear our prayer. Father, please help and guide all in these troubled times especially our earthly leaders. Help them to find the knowledge and strength they need to lead us and to gather the resources necessary to help those who suffer. God of life and love, hear our prayer. 
even though the world seems bleak. We are still reminded of your beauty and wisdom as we see trees blossom and plants and flowers begin to grow and the warmth of the sun shining into our lives. You have given so much joy to the world with the birth of Liam John McKenna, son of Allison and Logan McKenna. God of life and love, hear our prayer. Many of us are suffering directly from COVID-19 or other afflictions. Many of us are suffering from the loss of employment or financial harm. Many of us are feeling alone or desperate. We all need your help and guidance, especially those that we now name in our hearts. God of life and love, hear our prayer. We place our faith in you, O God, comforted by your mercy and love. We are truly blessed in this Easter season, and we pray for all these in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.